this module onwards, uh, we will actually try to see a set of uh, products or tools that are typically deployed on the network security uh, point of view and uh, why they are very critically required for any kind of a network topology in an organization. So, uh, one of the first kinds of devices uh, from the network security point of view that we will very commonly come across is something called as a firewall. So, what exactly is a firewall and what is it actually trying to do? So, firewall is a device that typically tries to isolate the organization's internal and the external network. So, the external network here would be typically the, the internet to which the organization would want to be connected to for doing its business activities, right. So, through this firewall, uh, the administrator would typically want to control of what packets basically pass through or allowed to be passed through and what kind of packets should be typically blocked. So, if you see here, if I basically have this part of my network uh, connected uh, uh, internally as part of my own organization network topology and I have a public internet uh, through my ISP to which I am connected to, right. So, I might have a router device here in which my public internet will be terminating and I also will have my intranet getting terminated on this router device, right. So, I will typically have a firewall device uh, just before this router device or as part of this router device itself uh, depending on the size of my network. Now, this firewall device is going to act as a sort of an interface or a bridge between my administered network that is basically my local intranet and my public internet and uh, I would have configurations done on this firewall device basically uh, uh, mentioning what kind of packets are to be allowed to basically get out of my intranet into the internet as well as what kind of packets are allowed to come from the public internet into my intranet to the extent of specifying what servers or machines inside my network alone are capable of receiving those packets, right. So, all these things are, are typically done in the firewall and that is why this firewall is something which is a very, very critical device uh, which has to be mandatorily set up in any kind of a organizational network. So, one of the common things that the firewalls is expected to do as a very set of critical activities is first it is expected to prevent denial of service attacks. Now, what exactly is a denial of service? So, denial of service is shortly referred to as DOS, right. So, we would have actually heard in quite a few situations in our professional uh, uh, career where uh, we might have read about or even experienced these kind of DOS attacks. Now, what exactly is a denial of service attack is that if external hacker wants to basically bring down a part of my network or a very critical server in my network, the person will basically try to see how the, the system resources on that particular server can actually be completely made use of thereby the resources not becoming available for legitimate connections that I might be getting on that server from outside my network, right. So, the attacker or the hacker will basically try to ensure that if for example, memory is a critical resource on that particular system, what all activities can he do to completely make use of the memory in a very bogus manner to such an extent that if there is a legal uh, legitimate connection that is actually coming on that same server for that particular connection, the server might not have the enough memory to be allocated, right. So, how is this actually possible? So, one type of denial of service attack is what is called as SYN flooding. Now, if we learn about something called as a TCP protocol, there is, uh, there is a, a three way handshake in the TCP protocol that is required uh, for any kind of data transfer to take place over a reliable TCP connection, right. Now, this kind of three way handshake is required to be completed before I could really start transferring the data. Now, an attacker will typically what he will actually try to do here is that instead of completing the entire three way handshake, right. So, from the client to the server, the acknowledgement from the server to the client and the final acknowledgement from the client to the server. So, that is the reason why we call it as a three way handshake. So, instead of really completing all the three 
uh, phases of this handshake, the attacker will basically keep the connection in a sort of an incomplete state for a very long period of time because of which whatever memory resources has actually been allocated by the server side, the server will not be in a position to make use of that for using those resources for legitimate connections that is actually coming in uh, from the clients which wants to complete the three-way handshake completely. right? So, thereby the attacker in this particular case will be bombarding this particular server with a heavy amount of SYN packets without really completing the entire connection. right? So, the memory buffers that was actually available for the, the server to handle all the incoming connections will be actually made use of for servicing these kind of bogus incomplete connections that this attacker is inducing into that particular server because of which a legitimate client will not be able to successfully get connected into the server and get a possibility of using the server for doing any kind of service that it is expecting from the server. right? So, firewalls uh, today are expected to detect all these kind of different possible uh, DOS attacks and prevent them with uh, different configurations that are typically done on the firewall device. right? Now, uh, the second uh, thing that the firewall device is expected to do is prevent illegal modifications or access of internal data. So, uh, I do not obviously want uh, uh, if my for example, I am running a, a business organization, I do not want my competitor to get access to any kind of my customer data because of which my business is at, at a huge risk. right? Or if, if for example, if my uh, uh, internal network is basically a government department's uh, network, I do not want uh, uh, unauthorized person coming from the outside internet to access all the confidential data that the government might be actually having as part of its intranet. right? So, irrespective of whatever is the usage, uh, the firewall is expected to provide the a protection mechanism by which uh, I will be able to set policies on what all kinds of servers or data that an external person can physically access uh, from the public uh, internet. right? So, I should be able to make these kind of configuration changes uh, uh, set up in the firewall to either enable or disable selectively of who can actually get control of the data that is actually available as part of my intranet. Third, allows only authorized access to inside network. So, essentially uh, other than the data even for the servers, the firewall device is basically expected to allow access only to authenticated set of users or uh, authenticated set of devices uh, to get inside the network and thereby preventing others from uh, sort of accessing any part of the network uh, in either either be it in terms of either the servers or in terms of even the data on those servers. So, there are typically two types of firewalls, one which is called as an application level firewall, another which is called as a packet filtering level firewall. right? So, packet filtering level firewall will basically be filtering the packets on an individual basis. right? So, I will basically have uh, different configurations done on my firewall device here. So, let us say that uh, I have the firewall device uh, available as part of my network router at my edge uh, itself which is basically the one that is really connecting to my internet. right? So, on that firewall device, I will basically have configurations specifying what kind of packets that are actually going out from my intranet to the internet should be allowed and what should be denied. And similarly, what kind of packets that are actually coming from the internet into my intranet should be also allowed and should be denied access. right? So, thereby I will basically try to have this filtering done on a per packet basis wherein every packet that is actually going out or coming inside my network. So, either going out of my internal network or coming inside my internal network will be subjected to these filtering rules only if the filtering rules is allowing it to be passed on to the other side. right? So, the packet will really be sent to the other side and uh, if, if, if that is not allowed or if it is if it has been explicitly denied, the firewall is expected to silently drop the packet without forwarding it to the other side, I mean other than whichever side it basically 
came from right. So, I could basically set it based on set these filters based on what is the source IP address of the packet or what is the destination IP address or what is basically the, the, the source port or the destination port at my TCP or UDP level at the transport level right or I could basically base it on the ICMP message type. Uh, so, what kind of messages can go basically go out of my uh, intranet to the internet and also vice versa. So, for example, uh, we had actually seen a trace route uh, application in our earlier module. So, the trace route application is actually using an ICMP message and for uh, a security reasons, uh, there will be certain firewall configurations which would have been done to sort of disable these ICMP messages from going outside the network or ICMP messages even getting responded from one part of the network to another part right. So, based on these parameters I could basically set on my firewall a filtering mechanism to either allow or deny on a per packet basis and that is basically the reason why we keep calling this uh, type of a firewall as a, a packet filtering firewall right. So, look at this one example. So, block incoming and outgoing datagrams with the IP protocol field set to 17 and with either source or destination port as 23 right. So, all the incoming and outgoing UDP flows because the IP protocol field is set as 17 that essentially means that uh, it is basically referring to only the, the higher level protocol to the IP layer as UDP. So, and with the source or destination port as 23 essentially means that 23 port number is used for telnet right. So, this kind of a rule will basically block all incoming and outgoing UDP flows and specifically UDP flows for the telnet protocol right. So, example 2 block inbound TCP segments with ACK is equal to 0 right. So, this basically helps uh, uh, the firewall to sort of prevent any kind of an external device from trying to make a TCP connection with any internal machine that is there as part of my local intranet right. So, because of the fact that I am basically saying inbound TCP segment with ACK is equal to 0 and uh, that is basically going to come in only when I have a SYN segment uh, for the connection TCP connection establishment from the outside network to coming into an internal node inside my network. But because of the fact that it is only telling inbound all kind of internal clients or devices can actually try uh, establish successfully a connection to the outside world right because it specifically the, the, the filter here is basically talking about only inbound TCP segments. This is not going to sort of block all outbound TCP segments. So, outbound TCP segments or inbound TCP segments is always with respect to the direction of traffic uh, from the firewall device. So, if there is a traffic that is coming from uh, internet into the intranet it is going to be referred to as inbound. If the traffic is going from an intranet that is my local network to the external internet it is going to be referred to as the outbound. So, in this particular filter configuration that I might have on the firewall, uh, this will only block all incoming connections uh, TCP connection request to any machine in my internal network, but it will allow any kind of an external connection going out uh, uh, from my internal uh, machine, any of the internal machines to anywhere outside in the internet. So, coming into the application gateway, I would basically try to have a application gateway component for uh, each of my applications. So, all kinds of traffic for that particular application will only be routed through that particular gateway component right. So, in the previous case, uh, in the previous type of a firewall what we were really trying to do was we were actually trying to have one single firewall device which was actually doing the filtering based on the conditions for all types of packets going inside or outside right. Whereas, in an application gateway there will be no packet filtering done on an individual packet basis, but I will typically have different gateways for different applications that I might be running right. So, for example, if I have a HTTP application I might have a HTTP gateway, if I have a telnet application I might have a telnet gateway. So, the telnet users will all be expected to go out into the public internet right only through that particular telnet gateway right. So, any, any machine on the network if it is expecting to get out to the uh, public internet will only be able to go through this telnet application gateway and only then this router will accept the connection to get out onto the public internet. So, if I basically try to have a, uh, a machine here in my network 
trying to directly go outside into the public network by trying to if it wants to for example do a telnet right uh, this particular router will sort of disable that because there is an application gateway firewall component that is actually set up in this particular network because of which all the the application traffic specific for that has to be routed only through one single server right so i could like for example have something similarly for my http uh, protocol also and that is basically what we very commonly refer to as a as a proxy server right so if i have a proxy server and uh, i have the proxy server connected to my firewall i will be able to hit multiple birds in one stone with the proxy server i will be able to have a better performance because the proxy server is typically going to cache the pages locally with the same proxy server i will also be able to allow and disallow certain types of users or certain types of ip addresses from going and browsing the outside network so all these things i will be able to do with the single proxy server so the proxy server is an, another example of a typical application gateway where the the firewall rules will be set up on a per application basis so uh, there are certain very common limitations of firewalls and gateways also if there is a, a ip spoofing done so ip spoofing really means that the attacker is basically trying to change the ip address from the actual ip address to something else and then try to bypass the the firewall rule uh, maybe because the firewall is allowing Uh, certain ip addresses to be using the firewall device to be having their packet sent out uh, in that case uh, if there is a spoofing, spoofing of the ip address uh, that is possibly done uh, there is a possibility that the router might not know if the data is actually really coming from the the claimed source right and uh, similarly uh, i also will have a, a requirement if i am using a gateway if i really have multiple applications that are required to be running in my internal network all requiring a gateway firewall component i need to actually have multiple application gateways set up right so in that way uh, i will also need to have the individual clients uh, being in a position to sort of know how to actually connect uh, to that particular gateway in addition to having multiple uh, gateways installed in my network so all these basically have uh, create certain limitations in how effectively or how optimally uh, these kind of firewall devices are actually Uh, used right so there is a common trade off that i will have to typically encounter wherein uh, the degree of communication of the outside world and the level of security is always a trade off so the more the amount of communication i want to have with the outside world i will have possibly lesser and lesser level of security or i will take a hit on the performance right uh, so i cannot really have a very high degree of performance and at the same time expect to have hundreds of filtering rules configured on my firewall because for every packet that is actually going through the firewall all these rules are going to be checked if all these rules are going to be checked then obviously there is going to be a hit on the performance rate because that um, time that the packet is going to be taking for it to be actually sent out of the device is going to become that much more as the number of rules increases that needs to be uh, checked so there is always a certain trade off between the amount of network security that we need to have established versus the kind of performance that we would really like to have and this trade off is a very delicate balance that a network administrator typically tries to achieve thank you